What's up guys, Cliff here from the Sunday Drive and today we're gonna to show you how to pull the motor out of my 2014 Silverado with the 5.3 liter. Now for those of you that have been watching the channel, this is part three of the AFM or DOD delete out of my Silverado. Now pulling the motor to delete your DOD or AFM is not absolutely necessary. It can be done in the vehicle. However, because we are filming this, we want to be able to show all of the steps. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to film everything with the motor outside of the vehicle. Now if you're not deleting DOD, this video will still help you. We're going to go through all the steps that you need to know in order to remove the motor from your vehicle. I'm also going to be removing my front grille and bumper. This is not necessary, but it's gonna give us a little bit more clearance to work with our jack stand or our engine hoist rather. We're going to lower the front of the truck down so that we have plenty of clearance to pull the motor up and over top the front. Remove the fender lining using a T15 Torx bit. If you guys don't have one of these, these are awesome. They're 90, de 90 degree tools from Dewa. There's probably other brands too, and we'll have a link to these in Amazon, but. Definitely a worthwhile purchase. The belly pan is held in by two 15 millimeter bolts up front, and then one, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom. Now we're not gonna show you in detail how to remove the front half since we already have a very detailed video showing how to do that at the link above. So check that out if you need to know how to pull the bumper, grill, and headlights off your vehicle. Now, as we go through the process of removing the motor, we will go through all the tools that are needed. We're not gonna put them up front because there's probably something that we're gonna forget. So as we step through the video, we'll go over anything that you need to pull this motor out of here. And anytime that you guys go through one of the links that we have in the description of this video to purchase anything, we get a little bit of a kickback, no extra cost to you guys. And it really helps us out and helps, you, uh, helps us bring videos like this to you guys. So we appreciate that. Disconnect the battery using a 10 millimeter socket. Remove your air box. We're gonna disconnect the MAF sensor right here. If you want, take a pick tool. And you can stick that up underneath and it'll release the clip. It's a little trick to get those to release a little bit easier. Take an eight millimeter socket and loosen your air box. Loosen this 10 right here. I should get enough clearance. Pull the air box out of the way. Good, there we go. Anytime I can, I'm gonna reinstall bolts as soon as I remove them so that they don't get misplaced. Another eight millimeter here that holds the air intake to the throttle body. And then there are two clips at the back of the air intake that are quick release. Just press in the top. Pull it off. And on this one, you're gonna press it in from the bottom. Pull that off. Now the air intake should lift right off. Next, we're gonna pull the radiator fans off. Now the one nice advantage of pulling the motor uh, rather than doing the cam swap inside of the vehicle is that you don't need to pull out the condenser or the radiator. So you actually can keep your Freon intact. You don't have to purge the system, uh, your AC system. So that is definitely a nice plus. Um, unfortunately, in my case, I have the uh, well-known condenser issue, so there's no Freon in my system. I have a new condenser ready to go in, but that is gonna be another video that we do for you guys, and we'll be sure to link that above once that video is done. Uh, but next, we're gonna go ahead and pull these radiator fans. Your fans are held in by two 10 millimeter bolts, one at the top of each corner. There's some other lines connected to the bottom of the fan, so go ahead and release those. And there are two electrical connections, one for each fan. The main coolant line is connected into the bottom of the fans. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how those electrical connections come apart once I pull the fan out. Should be a little easier to show you then. So here's the connection, and it was a little bit confusing to figure out because we couldn't really see it well, but it has this locking pin right there. 
you just slide that pin out, not all the way like I just did, but out like that far, and then you can press here and pull the clips off. Gonna start removing some of the radiator lines. Just gonna just get this little guy out of the way right here. All right, we got that loose, so I'm just gonna leave that capped on there so the fluid doesn't run out. And disconnect the upper radiator hose. Uh, hopefully a whole bunch doesn't come out of here. As we are at the top. I do have a five gallon bucket down there. Yep. I'm gonna go over to that. Make sure you don't have any pets around when you're doing this. I'm gonna fully remove this upper hose so it's out of the way. Now we're gonna disconnect the lower hose right here and try to get as much as we can into that bucket down below. The annoying thing about the Silverado is there's not a drain plug on the radiator. On my Camaro, there's a nice drain plug. Just pop it open, everything drains out nice and clean. Yes, there's just always get a little bit of a mess when you do it. Now that we've drained the coolant, we're going to completely remove that line from the vehicle. So we're disconnecting it from the overflow tank here. And that's the doorbell. On my vehicle, I've added a catch can, so I'm going to go ahead and drain that and then remove this from the vehicle. If you guys want to know how to install this, check out the video at the link above. And when people want to know if it actually catches anything, yes, it does. I have my catch can installed on the brake booster. It has a 15 millimeter nut that's holding it in place. And I'm just going to leave that loose because I'm going to have to reinstall the catch can. And now we just need to disconnect the two hoses that run into the catch can. If you don't have a catch can installed, these are going to be quick releases right here. One, and the other one runs up inside this valley right here. We're gonna remove the main belt. All right, we have a 24 millimeter socket on the main dampener here. And as you can see, we just kind of had to manhandle that off by turning it while uh, jamming basically a pry tool in between the compressor and the belt. With the belt off, there's a 13 millimeter nut that you're gonna remove from the stud right here, and then this very long 13 millimeter bolt that goes right up top right here. So we remove both of those, and now we need to basically pry the compressor down. It's kind of fused up here to the block, so we're gonna pry that down, and then it should slide off this stud. We're gonna disconnect this bracket holding the AC line up here near the alternator. There's also a 13 millimeter. All right, now we're gonna disconnect the electrical connections on the AC compressor. There's one I'm seeing right on top right here. Remove the intake manifold and throttle body as one unit. We're gonna disconnect the electrical connections uh, to the throttle body real quick. that out of the way. And then just to give us a little more space, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the injectors. I'm gonna remove this cover off the top here. Something's holding it in the back there, but it's out of the way at least. Stick this back on to keep that covered. Now there's two 10 millimeter bolts, well a 10 millimeter nut and a 10 millimeter bolt right here that hold the wire loom in place. So we're gonna disconnect those.
reinstall that bolt and nut. And the wire loom runs <coughs> across here to the top of the water pump. And then there's two more electrical connections underneath of your throttle body. Disconnect that connection. We're having a hard time getting to this plug under here. So once we have the manifold and throttle body out, we're gonna finish removing that one. Disconnect the, the injectors on this side. And if it's giving you some trouble, you can stick the pick tool underneath and release the clip. This tab here. Ah. Like that. that tab. Yeah. It was a pain in the butt. Now we're going to remove all the 10 millimeter bolts that hold in the intake manifold. Now, when you go to pull these up, if you pull them straight up, they're not going to come out. You have to rock them out at an angle to pull them out. And then the washer will stay on there, I believe. Now, if this is your first time removing this, there is going to be a cover on top of this, which is extremely painful to remove, even though it shouldn't be. Um, it's held in by a few bolts up top, which are easy to get to. The problem is this wire harness that uh, goes to all your injectors is actually clipped in to that cover back behind the manifold, and it makes it very challenging to access. I actually believe, if I remember correctly, we have a video showing how to replace the high-pressure fuel pump. And if I still have links left to, left to post, I'll, I'll have that linked above, but definitely in the video. And in that video, I show how to remove the cover off of this. I think I might have actually pulled the manifold out uh, before removing the cover and then got the cover removed after I had the manifold out. And that should be all the bolts. Yep, we are loose. <clears throat> Looks like there's one more electrical connection going into the manifold right here that I did not disconnect. Let's get that disconnected. Okay. We've already disconnected the battery. Now we're gonna remove the alternator. There's a 13 millimeter bolt up top here, or nut rather. And then there's two 15 millimeter bolts that hold the alternator in place. Disconnect the two heater core lines. We have the bucket right under there again. Let's do your best to catch your fluid. Obviously, I just grabbed a water bottle that was sitting around to capture that fluid. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bracket right here, 13 millimeter bolt. Disconnect the grounding wire below the alternator. Now we're gonna remove the alternator support bracket so that we can pull the water pump off. It's a 15 millimeter bolt. Um, just keep in mind, you do have to have the AC compressor as well as the alternator disconnected to have this work because this bolt and one of those bolts down there also hold this bracket in place. So we ended up pulling the stud out. It uses a five millimeter socket. And this was the stud that the uh, AC compressor was kind of stuck on. And the reason we decided to do it that way is because this bracket that the, a, um, that the alternator mounts to was also sitting on the stud directly behind the compressor. So with this removed, the compressor was able to come out and now we can also remove this upper alternator bracket. So you can see right here, the stud went right through this and then the AC compressor was sitting right in front of that. So removing that stud, let us get this out of there. And now we should be able to set this up and out of the way so that we don't have to disconnect any of the AC lines. So there's two more electrical connections we need to remove from the AC compressor. There is one right here. There's five hands in this shot. <laughs> <laughs> you're pulling that against my arm. You're not, your so arm's not budging. 
I'm gonna lift this tab up right here, pull that out. All right, and then we're gonna pull this clip off of the line right there. And that removes that, and we still have the one connection at the back that we need to pull out. All right, so we got that back electrical connection disconnected. Now we're just gonna go ahead and move this up and out of the way as best we can anyway. Take a 10 millimeter and disconnect this bracket holding the two lines going into the heater core. Now for the lines going into your heater core, you're gonna want a disconnect tool like this one. You're gonna slide it over top of the line, press it down, and it's gonna release the clips on the inside of this line. Now we got the one line off, but for some reason, the other line is giving us a really hard time coming off. We've been trying for a while. So we think we can squeeze the motor out uh, by just pushing this out of the way. So we're gonna try to do that since it's giving us such a hard time. And we're gonna push these out of the way. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the water pump. There's a 13 millimeter bolt right here. There's another 13 millimeter bolt right down here. Seems like there's one more bolt located behind the tensioner, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the tensioner off. This is held on with a 15 millimeter. Yep, right under here is another bolt. So once we have this out, we will show you where all the bolts are. There is kitty litter under the truck right now. Yeah, well, it's getting swamped <laughs> up immediately. All right, so a lot of coolant is gonna come out when you go to finally remove the water pump that's trapped up inside the motor. There are a total of seven bolts that you need to remove. They're all 13 millimeters. There are one, two, three over on the left or passenger side. And then there's four on the driver's side. One, two, three. And then the fourth one is right here underneath where the tensioner was. So you will need to remove that tensioner pulley to access this final bolt. Now we're gonna disconnect the clip on this fuel line right there. This pulls off the top and pulls out. We're gonna open this up. Now, keep in mind, this is a high pressure system here. Uh, so you wanna make sure the truck has been sitting for a while, but you will still get a little pop of fuel here probably. And these are single-use lines, so you will want to have replacements on hand. Oop, there's some fuel. Okay. Now, the first time when I did this, there actually was like a little puff of gas because I had to replace the high-pressure fuel pump. Um, but I guess the truck's been sitting for so long that all the pressure was gone from the system. There is a bracket right here holding this fuel line, and it's held in by a 10-millimeter bolt. You do want to make sure you have the right wrench for doing this. Line wrench. Now we're going to disconnect that 10 millimeter right in the center. And now there's a connection at the back of each rail we need to disconnect and one from the high pressure, pressure fuel pump. In order to pull the motor out, the hood needs to be in the upright position. First, we're gonna take a 10 millimeter wrench. I think this might be a nine, but the 10 is working. So, and we're gonna remove the antenna from the vehicle. Now we're gonna take a T40 Torx and remove this top bolt from the hood spring. Gently, please. <laughs> so we're gonna remove these corner pieces so that the hood can go back. Up, oh, there's two clips that go into the fender right like that. So once you lift this middle clip out, and there's another clip right there, this should pull out towards the middle. So we have it rocked back and it's now resting on a lip so it can't go any further back. And we have a screwdriver holding it right here. 
so it's not gonna come down, and we put one on the other side as well. All right, so we jacked the truck up, we have it on jack stands, and uh, removed the front two wheels. Now we're gonna disconnect the downpipes from the headers. Uh, there are three 15 millimeter bolts that hold the downpipes, uh, or actually there's three 15 millimeter nuts that hold the downpipes up to your headers, and there's studs coming down from the headers. And the final one we're probably gonna have to get from the outside using a ratchet wrench, but I'm gonna get the other two real quickly off of the driver's side. Over on the driver's side, the power harness runs to the back of the truck, so we need to move this out of the way so that we can get to the last bolt on the downpipe. There's a 13 millimeter holding this bracket in right here. Two 10 millimeters hold this bracket right here. That should give me enough clearance to get on here, hopefully, and break it free. So I went ahead and took a marker and marked locations on the top and the bottom of this shaft that we're getting ready to pull out here to make sure that we line it up exactly the same. So I'm taking a 6.15 millimeter socket on the bolt side and a 15 millimeter open-ended wrench on the nut side. And as you can see, I almost have this fully removed now. There we go, and this little bracket was under there. Bottom and top bolts are removed, and I'm working my way up towards the top. All right. So here's the passenger side downpipe, and there is a 10 millimeter holding on a cover plate that's going to make removing the starter a little bit challenging. So we're going to go ahead and remove. So I'm going to disconnect this wire right here. This is a 13 millimeter. With that 13 millimeter nut removed, we can pull this wire off. Directly below that is this uh, heat shield that goes over the electrical connection right here. So we're going to Push that down and then disconnect this connection. There is a red tab right here that you're gonna to need to push down. And usually these kind of suck. So once you press this red tab down, that's right next to my finger right there, you're then gonna to wanna to press down in the middle and then pull this connection off. We're underneath of the truck right now looking directly up at the starter and there are two 13 millimeter bolts. So this is the uh, cover plate that we loosened that had the one 10 millimeter in there. And then your starter should come out. So here's the flywheel right where the starter and access plate were located. There are three 15 millimeter bolts that connect the flywheel to the torque converter. You're gonna need to rotate the crank around at the front of the motor and have someone hold that in place while you break these bolts free. Now these were extremely tight what ended up working for us was a ratchet like this, a nice small head on it, and you were able to get up in here and break it free, but it does take a lot of force to break it free, and there's not really um, any space to put a breaker bar onto the wrench, unfortunately. Just rotate that crank around and work them off one at a time. And here's one of the two bolts that we removed. We need to lower the back of the transmission down so that we can access all the bolts around the bell housing. Um, this is held in by four 21 millimeter bolts. There's a 21 millimeter nut on the other end. If you don't have a wrench that's that big, you can also use a 13 16. So keep in mind, I have the top of the exhaust loose right now. So it's hanging down a little bit lower than it normally would be. And if you guys don't have a cordless impact like this one, I highly recommend it. You can see all the times that we're using it with this job and it's just, is a lifesaver not having to drag a cord or do everything by hand. So it was a little difficult filming everything under the truck, so we're gonna do a quick recap of what we just pulled out. This is the cross base that we removed the 421 millimeter bolts from. In the dead center were two 15 millimeter bolts or nuts that connected to the transmission mount. Once those were removed, we supported the transfer case so that the transmission wouldn't come down, and then we're able to pull this out. With this removed, we used one of these exhaust pullers, which is a very helpful tool, and some Vaseline to release the four um, exhaust mounts or exhaust hangers 
that were holding up the back half of the exhaust, and then we were able to slide the exhaust down and through the opening created by removing the cross member and move it back about a foot, which gives us a little bit more room to access the bell housing bolts and the torque converter bolts. We also had to disconnect the 402 sensors before sliding the exhaust back that are located by the catalytic converters. We're gonna remove the cover plate from the driver's side of the motor. Now this may not be necessary, however the guide we were looking at said that you should remove this, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. This is held in by a 10 millimeter, just like the other side. All right, it's cover plate removed. I'm just gonna stick that little bolt right back in there so we don't lose that. Next, we're gonna remove all the bolts holding the transmission to the motor. And once we have this disconnected and the motor pulled out, we'll overlay an image of where all of the bolts are. Okay. In order to remove the very top bell housing bolt, there's one in the dead middle and one a little bit towards the driver's side. You're gonna to need to get those from the top. We used a ratchet, a ratcheting wrench, and keep in mind that both of these have brackets on them, so you're gonna to need to start with a 13 millimeter to remove the outer nut. And then once that 13 millimeter nut's removed, you pull the bracket off and you can get to the 15 millimeter nut that is part of the stud. Using your cell phone camera uh, will actually help you see them, so you can use your cell phone camera or a boroscope to help line up your wrench and get it onto those two top bolts. So you're gonna to wanna to go back on the driver's side and down through the top middle here to get those two top bolts. We just removed a 13 millimeter nut from the bracket that holds the transmission dipstick and we're working on a 15 millimeter nut right here. Luckily these bolts are not too tight. There's a total of eight bolts that you have to remove from the bell housing. These two are on the bottom. The little bit longer one is over on the passenger side. Um, the studs are actually 13 on top and 15 on the bottom. So three of them have a 13 millimeter nut that's holding a bracket at different locations. Two of these are up top, one's on the bottom. Um, so you'll need to remove this with a 13 millimeter, remove the bracket, and then you get a 15 millimeter on the stud or the remainder of the bolt itself. So eight all the way around. Two of these are pretty much a bear. They're at the top and then the rest are not too bad to get to. Disconnect the motor mounts. They're each held in by three 15 millimeter bolts. Remove the passenger side bolts as well. This grounding wire attaches right here and there's an electrical connection right below it. Before pulling the motor, we are going to pull the dampener off just to give us a little more clearance. You're gonna to need to have this special tool once the starter's disconnected to hold the flywheel in place because we've also disconnected the torque converter. So this will bolt up right where the starter used to be installed and these teeth will keep the flywheel from rotating. We took a torch and heated up the crank bolt and then used our biggest impact gun to get this off. We first tried to break it the old fashioned way with a big breaker bar and that just slipped off and didn't do anything. So impact gun is definitely the way to go on this, but heat was important. We had the impact running on it for a while, did nothing, we heated it up and then it came right off. One mistake we made, well, many mistakes, but one mistake that we showed you guys was we forgot to move the belt from this pulley right here before removing the crank bolt. So we just loosely put the crank bolt in just enough so that this would start spinning again. Uh, we removed the limiter that we had installed back by the starter, and then we rotated this and removed the pulley by sticking a screwdriver under here and slowly working the belt rather off of here. Now we have the dampener puller installed. What we did was take a small bolt that sticks into where we removed that large bolt from um, so that this is not pushing into where the crank is. You don't want to do that, obviously. So this is on the head of that bolt that's sitting in there. And then we have the teeth for this around the back pulley of the dampener. So we're just doing it with this and it's already actually starting to come off. You can see it's pulling out right there. There we go. And you can see that small bolt right here that we stuck inside. So just small enough that it fits inside this diameter but doesn't go through. So one of the teeth has fallen off and it's on the other side right now, but you're gonna wanna have your teeth 
on this side of the pulley right here. And you just wanna make sure they're not too big that they're gonna slip off. And we'll have a link to a puller in the description of the video. So I'm not sure if you can tell from this perspective, but we lowered the front of the truck down. We still have it on jack stands and jacks, but we got the front lower so we have less of a clearance to get over with the motor. So we have our chains hooked up right here. We picked up a grade eight M10 bolt for right there. And then because we had trouble getting the fuel rails out, we're gonna remove those after the motor is pulled, but we connected in to uh, the heads through the fuel rail bolts, one up front here and then the back two. Um, and because we're distributing the weight before, between four pickup points, we should have no problem pulling the motor out this way. But for now, all the bolts are disconnected from the transmission. Um, we have both engine mounts disconnected. And as far as we can tell, all of the connections to the motor itself are disconnected. The only thing that we haven't disconnected is the oil cooler lines that run to the bottom of the motor. They are, there's not enough room to get to the bolts because of where the front axle mounts up to the front differential. Um, so we're hoping with the motor raised up a little bit, uh, there is some give in the lines and we'll then be able to disconnect the oil cooler line. So let's give this a shot. Just shake it. All right, so this ground wire goes down to the back of the block. It goes up here. There's a ground wire right here on both sides of your heads that we had to disconnect. You can see one right here and the other one's on the other side. Um, down directly below, below each manifold, there is an electrical plug that goes straight up. One right about here towards the back and right over here as well. There's a plug that goes straight up and it has like that tin foil cover over it. So you gotta pull that tin foil cover down and then you can access that. On the passenger side right here, we just found a bracket that's holding by a 10 millimeter bolt. It's holding the wire harness. As you can see, we have this gap starting at the bottom of the bell housing. Um, we had to chisel up from the bottom to get that to separate. Um, and that, to even get a gap to appear just involved a lot of shaking and wiggling of the transmission um, and the motor. But as you can see, Pete's putting in the chisel in there. So that's kind of where he was chiseling up from to get that gap. Um, now, as big as this gap is on this side, there's really no gap on the other side yet. So um, this thing likes to stay together. So right up here is one of those dowels I was talking about. You're not going to be able to see it in the video, um, but if you feel in right here, you can actually feel the dowel. And if you're looking at it from the back side of the truck or the transmission side, you can actually see it sticking through a little bit. And you can also see uh, the hole right here where the dowel goes through. Um, so that's where I was heating up with the blowtorch. And the dowel on the other side is right about the same height. You can see that dowel pin directly above my pry bar. And even with this much of a gap, it's still taking a ton of force to separate it. And this is even with the weight of the motor trying to pull us apart as well. So you can see why it takes so much effort when it's all the way in. Well, that sucked. So after about three hours, we finally separated the motor from the transmission. So there are only eight bolts seats that we showed you guys to remove, but this is a huge pain. Um, as you guys saw, we used multiple jacks underneath of here to create different pivot points, one up at the front of the bell housing. We raised and lowered the back of the transmission near the drive shaft, and then the engine was completely loose from the motor mounts, and we were raising and lowering that with the engine hoist. Um, and it just took forever to get even a little bit of a gap. We used a torch to heat up where those dowel pins are. You can see one of those dowel pins. Um, so that dowel pin was definitely holding us up. So we heated those up with torches and this was just a bear. But finally we got a little bit of a sliver of a gap and just started beating larger and larger pry tools into it until we were able to start working our way around the bell housing. I think we have all the electrical connections disconnected, but we'll find out in a minute as we start to pull this out. But we finally got that done and can keep going with the engine removal. Right here is the oil cooler. Um, it's held in by two 10 millimeter bolts. Now these are really tight, um, but now that we have the engine up a little bit and in, I'm able to get my impact on there and just angle this over. 
Now this one was very close to that edge, so we're using a thin wall. All right, and we got the motor out of the truck, guys. We've got it put onto the stand. That was a little bit of a headache, but we did manage to get it onto there. Obviously, this is a different day. We finished at like six in the morning, so we did not shoot the wrap up at finish, but the motor is out, it's on the stand. And in the next video, we are gonna show you guys how to pull this motor apart and get it ready to install all of the new components. So thank you guys for watching. If this video was helpful, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. And if you guys have any comments or questions, definitely leave them down below. We will see you guys here next time for the disassembly of this motor.